to my channel. This is Amber's World. And if you are new here, welcome. Welcome to the fam. Welcome to this channel. If you like what you see today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're already a part of my fam, well, welcome back. So without any delay, we're gonna get into this. This documentary, White Hot, The Rise and Fall of Abercrombie and Fitch. This is going to be like an overview of how I felt about the documentary, certain things um, that I remember off the top of my head that really stood out to me. It could be argued that Abercrombie and Fitch was at its prime when I was in middle school and high school. So we're looking at the years 2006 to 2013. And I'm even stretching it because now that I look back, it really was at its height during my middle school year. So that's 2016 to 2018. And then I still saw my classmates wearing Abercrombie and Fitch freshman year and sophomore year. Junior year on, it was more like other brands like Buckle. Hollister was also really in, but Abercrombie and Fitch, girl, honey. Abercrombie and Fitch in 2006, if you weren't in it, you were not in, okay? And that's just on period. So. With that said, I love how the documentary just exposes everything that was completely wrong about this brand and what it stood for. Now, the clothes, the clothes were nice. You know, the clothes were good quality, um, but they were overpriced. Like, there was nothing wrong with Abercrombie, the actual item. Um, you know, if that was your style, great. But the power of marketing is that you can take something that really isn't all that, and if you put the right face on it, if you put the right smoke and mirrors around it, people can make something that isn't really that cute and make it seem like it is the greatest thing in the world. And that is what the CEO, well, former CEO at the time, Mike Jeffries did. I just remember being, what, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, walking through the classroom, walking through the hallways of my school and seeing all these pretty little white girls around me um, wearing this brand that I had never heard of until I moved from Georgia to Tennessee and was starting to go to school. Um, this was new to me. And all I knew is that everybody was wearing it and I wasn't, and I wanted to be like everybody else and I wanted to wear it. That's exactly how Abercrombie & Fitch was marketed. Like this is, the, this is what the cool kids wear, this is what the white kids wear, this is what the skinny people wear. And you know, I was skinny, um, but I wasn't cool and I wasn't white. So I was even more desperate to get my hands on Abercrombie & Fitch. I love how the documentary really took the time to expose the white supremacy that was at the core of this brand and at the core of the people who were in the higher chain of command with Abercrombie and Fitch. Um, they really, ex they did a good job of really exposing the discriminatory practices that they did when hiring people to work in the stores, um, hiring people to model for the brand, and just, you know, the actual vibe. Um, one thing I do appreciate, and the only thing that I appreciate about former CEO Mike Jeffries doing, he was honest. At least, like, I like to say that he was the Donald Trump of the fashion industry because just like Donald Trump, Mike Jeffries did not feel the need to hide his evil ways. He made it very clear that this brand was not for people who were not skinny, who were not rich, and who were not white. And that's just what it was. Woo, child, I need, to, I need to take a sip real quick. I even remember applying to be an Abercrombie and Fitch sales associate. I just knew in my heart that I just wouldn't get hired because even though, like I said, I was skinny, I wasn't really the cutest girl back then. Um, I wasn't textbook pretty. I wasn't pretty by society standards. I know I'm pretty and I know I was pretty then, but looking back, I was a dark skinned black girl um, with a terrible perm. And I knew that somehow, even though I did good with the interview, I wasn't going to be judged strictly on how I presented myself in the interview. 
And looking at the documentary, when they talk about how people literally were told to judge people by how they look and not by their performance in the stores as Abercrombie Sales Associates, um, it was definitely confirmation to me why I never received a call from them. Actually, when I was interviewed, I was interviewed by this really good looking, light skinned, buff black guy. And I thought that maybe because, you know, I was black, he was black, that at least I wouldn't be discriminated against because of my race. But again, going back to the documentary, even the very few black people that were um, in charge of the hiring process or involved with just anything to do with Abercrombie and Fitch, they were pressured to judge people. And that to me is just like really, really sickening. Walking into Abercrombie and Fitch stores um, was just an experience in its own. My mother hated going into Abercrombie and Fitch. It smelled very strong. It was dark and the sales associates didn't really care to help you. They were just kind of there to look pretty um, and take all your money. And that's exactly what they did. The exclusivity at the time really was at its height. One thing that the documentary did was go back in time. Like I didn't know how long Abercrombie and Fitch was around, even though it did say when it was established, but that went over my head, right? Um, the tone of Abercrombie and Fitch was set years ago, but when Mike Jeffries came around, he basically took that foundation and just made it like more and more and more toxic and more and more white supremacist. I'm grateful for the people in the documentary who were brave enough to sue Abercrombie and Fitch when they realized that they were like, you know, like racist trash. And another thing in the documentary that I absolutely hated that hurt my heart was the designated black guy who was in charge of what would be considered today the diversity, equity, and inclusion department. He was basically used to basically take the brunt of the controversy when Abercrombie and Fish was exposed for being racist. They thought that by hiring that designated black guy to be in charge of diversifying the brand, um, when they would actually be exposed for not actually doing what they were supposed to do and bringing di diversity, equity, inclusion, what do they do? They blame it on the black guy who was in charge of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And the same thing still happened today, um, which is why I love how they still kind of pointed the finger at how our society is today. Because even though we've gone super, a super, super long way, we definitely have some ways to go. Social media has played a part in the downfall of so many brands and people who just had evil intentions. And even though there are still people in this world who are still racist, who are still um, classist, who are still um, fat phobic and all the things, social media, what it did was it silenced those people. Social media made it uncool to be outwardly disgusting to other people. Um, it, did, it didn't change hearts. It just made people who were mean, you know, scared to be mean out loud. Um, that's what I really got from the documentary. The age of social media really was the turning point of everything. And also, can I just, while we're on the subject, the fact that this guy right here, this guy right here had the nerve to tell me what was good looking. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. I feel tremendous amounts of regret because as a kid, I remember wanting to fit in so bad. I grew up in a predominantly um, white community. I grew up going to predominantly white schools um, pretty much all my life. I remember at the time it being very, very um, apparent to me. It was very, very obvious to me that I just didn't fit in. And no matter how hard I tried, I always stood out. And I thought that at the time that if buying Abercrombie and Fitch was what, what was going to make me fit in or seemed remotely like the people that I was sitting next to in class, that maybe there's hope. And of course, that is such a ridiculous thing to think about um, now that I'm you know, 27 years old. But it just, it kind of brought up a little bit of like trauma for me. I just, 
remember hating life back then, but trying so hard to survive um, in the small bubble that I was in in middle school and high school. But I'm stronger for it. And of course, looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, like how ridiculous was I as a kid to think that one clothes made you, clothes defined you. But that's the thing with marketing. They were so good at making other people feel like if you did not have on this brand, you were not cool. They really, really, really drove that home to people and we bought into it. I don't wanna to give too much of the documentary away. Hopefully this video encourages you to go see it. I just had to put my opinions out there about it because honestly, like I said, it, it struck a, a different nerve for me as somebody who was very young and impressionable at the time when Abercrombie & Fitch was the hottest of the hottest thing to wear. And, you know, like I said, when I think of Abercrombie & Fitch, I think of The Hills, MTV, Paris Hilton, Flavor of Love, like that era, like when it was cute to be super skinny, big booties were not in, big boobs were not in, curves were not in. And if you were not white, you really weren't that in. So I just love how our world has evolved. Um, it still has a long way to go. And um, for those of you who, like I said, were kids or parents at the time when Abercrombie & Fitch was out, definitely watch this. I think you'll get a huge kick out of it. Five out of five, a 10 out of 10, a three out of three, a two out of two, however you wanna, whatever scale you wanna put it on. And yeah, y'all, it was definitely tea. And can we talk about before I go, how predatorial the people who were in charge, I don't remember the guy's name, the photographer, but the photographer in the documentary was like molesting models and he was exposed for that. Like, oh my gosh, thank you God for the Me Too movement. Thank you God for the Me Too movement because that was just disgusting. Um, all right, that's that was all I wanted to add. That's definitely in the documentary, definitely watch that. They definitely spilled some tea on that as well. And that was it. Thank you so much for watching. Again, like, comment, and subscribe to this channel if you will. And uh, until next time, bye.